From Sandy Williams IV, I guess all through the Virginia school systems, to now I teach at the University of Richmond. So I'm an artist, an educator, kind of, I feel like, someone who's just civically engaged in mainly public space has been kind of the theme of a lot of my work for the past five years, I'd say. My work in public art sort of started in that vein of wanting to recontextualize the ways in which we get to inhabit space, especially public space. Early in that, I was realizing how much red tape there is around the ways we're allowed to engage with the public or the spaces that we inhabit. Totally. Um, I think reconsider is a huge part of that in that we're in a big moment um, with public space and public history and the ways we're telling those things, the ways we're building memorials and monuments to sort of um, carry a lineage or a history. The 40 Acres Archive I've been working on for almost two years now. But it's interested in locating the history of the Reconstruction era in, in place. So it's through storytelling, public performances, and public installation artworks. I think we're, we're right in line with that idea of trying to build new context around the ways that we tell those histories, um, acknowledging histories that have been forgotten or sort of excluded from a more national public popular narrative, um, especially sort of centering black and indigenous histories as they've been excluded from popular narratives. Um, and so Chimbrazo Park was a great place to start being in Richmond um, when I started this project. In doing that project, in researching for it, I had found that um, Chimbrazo Park, before it was a public park, was a freedman community. And I didn't know what to do with that at the time. And so I always knew I wanted to come back and sort of think about what that meant for that space, especially it being this history that I found pretty easily, but had no acknowledgement um, in the public space. So there's um, the Chimbrazo Park, it's sort of remembered as this Confederate monument in Virginia. Um, but there was no acknowledgement to the fact that it was a freedman community, that the people that lived there had been evicted by the city, um, the different ways that the city had gone about um, making it illegal to be homeless and then making all these people homeless and then um, sort of forcing them back into situations where they were performing free labor. Um, but if you understand that history, that city starts to make a little more sense. So it was a project to sort of come back to that and acknowledge it and build language around it. And that's kind of how the 40 Acres Archive started, was thinking about that one place, but then realizing that that's kind of US history. Um, we have all these hidden histories all over the country. And so it's grown out of that purpose or that um, initiative to sort of create events around these histories. And so I like having the opportunity to see what 40 Acres really looks like um, as what that space could be, but then also the way that it was temporary and it dissipated. Um, so I like that, the way that it sits in that space of being temporary and not taking up permanent space, continuing, I guess, in the memories that we keep about that performance. Um, and, you know, like the documentation being in video and in photography, um, but really in like, in now folklore as well, in the way that people that came to that thing really remember it and still talk about it. Um, that's the goal, I think, for the future events as, as well, is to sit in memory in a way that's exciting. When I first started doing the Wax Monument series, I feel like, so I started with Jefferson and then pretty quickly went to the Confederate monuments in Richmond because I had moved to Richmond. You know, I was like burning these Confederate monuments and Jefferson, um, and it felt like a very one-sided thing of, take down those Confederate monuments without seeing the larger picture of the way. Um, so that's when I brought in Lincoln as sort of like a different pole to the whole Confederate Union conversation and that it's not just about, you know, like taking down the Confederate monuments and putting something else on that, but about the pedestal itself and the ways that it presents all these different problematics that if that thing doesn't change and everything else does, the ways it doesn't grow with the way our societies need to.
And I guess the main theme is both, again, the sort of impetus of the Wax Monument series being to open up these public spaces, let people have agency over these symbols and forms that we're bombarded with and sort of uh, have to deal with. And then also in an effort to demythologize that history of Lincoln as sort of, you know, I think he's remembered as this great emancipator, not to take away from the work that he did, but just to acknowledge all the people that helped him make that decision, um, the centuries of sort of abolitionist movements that informed that history, um, and the efforts that enslaved people were making to free themselves um, before, long before that document was signed. Um, so it's just trying to tell the bigger, more, a more inclusive history as it relates to the Civil War and Lincoln and emancipation. So it's getting into all that history, as a, again, as it relates to this longer arc or narrative of like U.S. history.